Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and um, we are going over the mindset of a trailblazer. This is part 17, and this is, in my opinion, uh, one of the biggest things that, that God has done uh, in all this whole time of, of these in the last 10 years of showing me this message. And, you know, when the end of the year came last year, when God, you know, finished um, bringing all those people to us um, so we could study the Bible with them, uh, he revealed his biggest revelation yet up to this point. And he revealed to us how he was going to separate his people from everyone else. And he was going to put his bride under the covenant of God. The same covenant that he had gave Moses back in the day, he was bringing that covenant back and going to start leading people to the kingdom of God. And so what, what actually happened is it was pretty interesting because the end of this year came, or end of last year came, and we were, of course, looking for the barley to be a Aviv. And that was in the month of uh, February, end of, Mar you know, end of March, or beginning of March. So we're looking for the barley to be a Aviv, and everyone was. Because, you know, there's people that call themselves Jews, and there's a lot of people that honor God, and they understand the barley being a Aviv. So we're waiting for the barley to be a Aviv. So we're going every single day. I'm looking online, trying to find people, because there's no barley where I live. So I had to go look for where the barley was. And so we found some people online. And we found this one couple that the barley was Aviv. And it was interesting because they started honoring the barley. They said, you know, the barley is Aviv, so they were going to go ahead and start honoring it. And we did too. We saw that the barley was Aviv. And we said, okay, since the barley is Aviv, we're going to go ahead and honor it. And we did. But the people that called themselves Jews decided not to honor the barley that year. They weren't going to honor it. They decided they were going to come up with their own way of doing it. They were going to honor the barley the following month, so in April. So it was interesting because this year God separated us out completely from the people that called themselves Jews and for the people that are following them based on God's new moon because they're following it on Saturday and Friday night to Saturday night. And God showed us that the, the new moon celebration starts, starts the month. So this year, for the first time in probably thousands of years, that somebody is honoring God's calendar based on God's calendar, and separated out from everyone else. And when we saw that, we were just so amazed because when those people took those pictures of the barley being a beef, we didn't need to see a lot of barley a beef. We just needed to know that the barley was a beef, and it was. And we honored it based on faith. And so they had two different people, one, one group and then another group saw it, and it was just a little small patch of barley. But bottom line is in the Bible, it just says the barley needed to be a Aviv. It didn't say how much barley needed to be a Aviv. But the people that called themselves Jews decided that they're going to take it upon themselves to not honor it that year, that month. And they honored it the following month. The next day after we saw the barley Aviv, the new moon came, and we honored the feast. That was in March of 2019. And so it was cool because the barley was a Aviv. We started our month. We spotted the new moon. And we're on God's calendar, separate from everyone else this year. And I did a lesson on that for Passover this year, and it was awesome. And you can see that link you know, below and everything about what, what happened in Passover. But it was really cool because now we now are following God's calendar and completely separate. So now what ended up happening is from that point on, we started teaching messages. And the messages got more intense and more powerful from the Lord. And God started showing us even more in the scriptures all throughout the year. And more and more people started coming and coming and start learning it. And then I did a Facebook ad. And that Facebook ad has gone to over 12,000 pastors in India and Africa. And there's so many amens and so many people that are like, wow. And they're inspired by it. I get people every single day now coming to me saying, I want to know more about the Sabbath. I want to, I see the end time. I see it. In other words, it feels like God is just kind of like what he did with Noah. Noah had to build this ark. And, he, and then he sent all these animals to start coming to get on the ark to save themselves two by two. It feels exactly the same way. Because we're not doing anything special. We're not, we're not anything special. All I'm doing is showing the scriptures. God's bringing the people to get on the ark so they can go into the promised land. God's doing it for, for himself, and, and it's been really cool because we now know that that barley in the scriptures was a sign between God and his people. And the Passover is a, is a sign, and it's going to be on your hand and on your forehead. You can read about that in uh, Exodus 13. 
And the Sabbath day is a sign between God and his people. And we know that the only way you can get to the correct Sabbath day is by the new moon. And right now, we are the only entire organization that we know of that is honoring it based on the new moon. And so this year, God separated out his people um, to lead us into the promised land. And so the Lord's been showing it to us, and now it's been, we're coming up to the Feast of Trumpets of 2019. And I don't know what the Lord's going to do. I can't tell you what the Lord's going to do, but what I do know is the Lord has sent a message called, We Are the Ark. And you can find that at the link below. It's bit.ly forward slash we are the ark. And because the Ark of the Covenant back then was the Moses and the Israelites had to carry that covenant into the promised land. And the covenant had, I'm sorry, the, the, the Ark had the Ten Commandments, which was the covenant. And they were supposed to take it into the promised land the first time. But they didn't. They didn't go in. Uh, but the Lord said in the New Testament, he's going to put his covenant on our hearts. And that's why myself, my family, the brothers here in the United States and sisters here in the United States, the brothers in India and Africa, that God is putting this message about the Ten Commandments. He's putting it on their hearts. They've been baptized in water for the forgiveness of their sins. They've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the seal of God. They are Abraham's seed. And they are absolutely um, walking towards the kingdom of God. And God also showed us this year how the ark landed, if you look in uh, Genesis 7, I think 7, 8, 9, the ark, you know, had been floating on the earth those days of Noah, and it landed on top of the, the mountain, on Mount Ararat. It, mount, it landed on the 17th day of the seventh month. And this year, the 17th day of the seventh month lands smack dab in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. So... We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen on the Feast of Trumpets. I pray that the Lord comes on the Feast of Trumpets. We don't know what's going to happen on the Day of Atonement. We know that's 10 days later. We don't know what's going to happen on the Feast of Tabernacles. We don't know what's going to happen on the 17th day of the seventh month. We don't know. We don't know. But what I do know is that we're going to be ready. The Bride of Christ is going to be ready. The Church of Philadelphia, the people that are obeying His commandments, obeying His Sabbath day. We are absolutely ready for the Lord to come. Uh, I don't know if this is the year he's going to come. We do know that the 400-year prophecy that was given to Abraham in Genesis 15, and that prophecy it says that for 400 years they're going to be enslaved, and then at the end of the 400 years, the slavery is going to be over, and they're going to come out with great possession. I know that 400 years was when the slave ships landed in the United States, in 1619, well, two, 400 years later is the year 2019, which is exactly 400 years, which is this year. And I believe that the Israelites are now, who are the true Israelites of the scriptures, are going to come out with great possession. Uh, I don't know if this is the year that the Lord is going to come get his people, but this is what I do know. We're praying for you. We're praying for the Lord. We're praying for the people. We're praying for you that's watching this message to repent. And we pray that the Lord will come quickly, just as you promised you would. And the Bible says in Amos 3.7, The Sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing His plan to His servants. The prophets. To God be the glory. Amen.